Mark and Liz recruited me to um, kick this thing off, give you guys a little bit of per perspective. Um, and one of the ways I thought might be interesting and a little bit of fun is to um, look back 10 years ago and kind of see what was going on uh, in the world broadly and then specifically in, in our little world of uh, action sports. Um, and hopefully that offers you uh, some interesting perspective as you kind of get kicked off with uh, the rest of the panels today. So 10 years ago, we were worried about Y2K and hanging chads. Um, the St. Louis Rams won the uh, Super Bowl. The Lakers, uh, yeah, you in the back. Uh, some things have changed. Some things have remained the same, as you can see across in 2010, Lakers back in it again. Uh, also for the Laker fans, uh, Phil Jackson signed on. I think that is done officially. So um, we'll be looking for, for Phil's number 12. In the golf world, in the, year, the calendar year uh, 2000, Tiger Woods won three of the four majors. And then he went on in, the, in April of uh, 2001 and won his fourth consecutive major. 2010, Tiger's not looking so good. Uh, he's in sex addiction rehab right now. Eminem uh, was battling it out with Britney Spears at the top of the music charts, and, and today Eminem is battling it out with Katy Perry. Movies that were, that were uh, highlighting the year, uh, Traffic, I don't know if you guys remember that, really intense uh, film. That was kind of the high end of the spectrum of, of popular film. At the low end, Dude, Where's My Car? I'm sure all of you saw that in a drunken haze at some point. On TV, the uh, top of the dramas was West Wing, known for really clippy, fast-paced, intense uh, dialogue. Today, it's Mad Men, a show that's known for very slow-moving dialogue and not much of it. My favorite on, on that one was Marmaduke, this year's uh, walk-away winner at the box office. I'm sure you all saw that one, too. Another uh, compare and contrast Apple, um, they were still making computers in 2000. The iPod had not landed yet. It was another year before the iPod landed in 2001. Today they have introduced three new disruptive technologies that are changing the way all of us operate um, and consume media. Um, in the energy drink world, something that's close to all of us in this room, um, in 2000, Red Bull was two years into uh, the American market. Rockstar and Monster were a year away. Today, all three of them are powerhouses battling it out for riders, events, spending millions of dollars, not only in the US, but around the world. In 2000, Billabong went public, uh, and it was just Billabong. That is Billabong today. You talk about uh, expansion, growth, change. Uh, Billabong probably represents change in this industry more than anybody else. Summer X, we just wrapped up 16. Uh, Summer X 16. Sal's going to come out in a little bit and participate in a panel. Um, the, the notable item for me in looking back at, at 2000 and contrasting it with this year is Travis Pastrana riding off one of the ramps into the bay in San Francisco. And this year on a victory lap, this is how far progression has taken uh, this one particular aspect of action sports. During a victory lap, he did a double backflip with a broken collarbone, 16 stitches, screws and plates on his shoulder. The broader action sports event landscape, some of us who were around remember the Gravity Games. Wade, you're around here, you remember the Gravity Games. The ASP has actually shrunken. Uh, it's gone from 13 events to 10. I would argue that the wave locations are superior today than they were 10 years ago. Kelly, at the age of 28, only had six titles. Now he's 38 with nine, and he's fighting hard for that 10th title this year with, with Mick. Vans had its triple crown of surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. And while they've maintained uh, the core of that triple crown property in surfing, there are other events that have risen uh, to note not the least of which is this weekend's Maloof Money Cup. Street League coming up, Rob Dyrdek's um, brainchild, King of Wake Wakeboarding Tour, and Red Bull's X Fighters series. This was a really fun one for me to put together because I was, I've been in, 
in the television side of this business for 15 years. 10 years ago, X Games was doing 36 hours. Now they're doing 62 hours of coverage, including 3D. Uh, this year, I think they, were, they had multiple hours each day of three, live 3D coverage. Gravity Games at five. Dew Tour is doing 40 hours of coverage. Blue Torch, uh, which again, some of you who were around may remember, um, we did 260 hours of original programming a year. Fuel TV programs, 8,760 hours uh, each year. There are about 350 hours of original programming alone that come out of Fuel TV. The total hours on television in 2000 were 327. Today, in terms of programmed hours, there's, there's almost 9,000 hours of programming uh, that we all get to enjoy. To kind of really hopefully set the tone, that's, that's a little bit of the look back uh, and look at where we are today. One of the things that we're doing each and every day right now at Fuel TV is challenging ourselves to look beyond the base of core participants. We're very fortunate we've been able to build a brand that resonates and has awareness across uh, over 80% of the, the riding population. But the big challenge for us, and I would argue the big challenge for everybody in this room, is to expand beyond that base. Build appeal that reaches out to the people who don't ride. This is the big opportunity for us at Fuel, for everybody in the room, whether you're an event, whether you're an endemic sponsor, whether you're a non-endemic sponsor, whether you're a media company. Quick show of hands, how many have been in the industry working for 10 years? That's, that's a solid number. The slides bef before, there are some things that have changed, but there's a lot that hasn't changed. We've got a lot more hours of, of programming on the air, but there are a lot of things that haven't changed. I think we still tend to fish in the same uh, small watering holes and one of the ways that we look at our role at Fuel TV is to be cultural translators. Um, we, uh, on our staff, have people who grew up riding, whether it was snowboarding, surfing, skating, uh, motocross, etc. So we feel like we understand the culture, we live it, and now we have to, to really translate that to this broader audience. And the way we feel we can do this, and we can work with all of you to do this, is to to tell the stories about the people, the places, and the events in a way that speaks to these kind of core values that action sports, each of them individually share, and that I think is the reason why people who don't ride tap into these sports and observe them. It's this idea of exploration, progression, and innovation. Ten years ago, if you had talked to a number of programming executives in the television industry and asked them what they thought would be some of the most highest rated television shows, they would not have mentioned a show about commercial fishing or dog training or a pawn shop. Today, some of the highest rated shows on cable television include Dangerous Catch, Dog Whisper, and a show called Pawn Stars. The reason they were able to to turn those shows into popular television shows is because they told great stories about interesting people. And that's the challenge that we face. We've got amazing people doing amazing things with incredible stories at locations around the world that are, that are engaging and exotic. And we need to tell those stories and bring more people into the tent. So with that, uh, I hope you all are a little primed. Your engines are firing a little bit. Um, thank you all for coming out. And uh, I'll turn it back over to Mark and let him bring out the panel.